The first time I heard Highlander by Lyle Mays was when a friend got me a copy on a cassette. On one side it said, uh, Pat Metheny Group, still live talking. And side A was Lyle Mays. You know, we can talk about two ways of developing um, musical motifs in the music of Lyle Mays. The first way is the classical way. Uh, you know, what he learned from a composer like Beethoven, that was taking a little seed, a small musical unit, and making a whole musical structure out of it. A great example comes from The Way Up, where uh, Pat Metheny and Lyle Mays took that old melody by um, Pat Metheny. And we can hear that da 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 da. So this section starts with the motif inverted, playing upwards instead of... Now another type of development in music we can see in Highland Air, and it has to do with a general tendency Lyle had, which is just asking himself, is that all I can do with a certain piece of music? Is there more? Is there potential for more? And this is what I'm going to show you in Highland Air. So the music starts from C major, from C to B flat. So let me show you two things. The first one, when we're getting to the F, again, From this F, we have this leap of faith from F to D. And then we have this motion all the way up to D. Remember that place. And then Second thing I wanted to show you is he's getting to that area of A flat and E flat here. He could have ended it with on E flat, something like that. It's not really nice. <laughs> it on C major. Wonderful. Now remember that part of the now after that A part he goes to the B part which starts from A flat which is almost the same melody as but now we have it that's a modulation to A flat. Now here exactly is what I wanted to show you. But in order to see that, I'm going to uh, transpose this part to C major. And
and we can see better the differences between the two versions of the melody. So it starts almost the same. This is the second part, the A flat transposed to C. Before we had very gentle, this time a dominant chord. This is wonderful. So in the first part, it's Second part is you hear that instead of and second time more exciting and as a result the melody gets excited reaching E this time instead of D. And remember that part. If I transpose it instead of this time we have That part cannot be the same after that explosion. We can see the effect of that excitement on the music that comes afterwards. Instead of starting from a root position chord, this time we're starting from a first inversion chord. So instead of B flat, B flat over D. This is um, less stable and it also means that the music will not be able to rest there, but move forward. And it stops here on this G flat. What we have in this part is a gentle game of major and minor because we are in B flat major and suddenly we have this G flat major chord. We can think of it as the sixth degree coming from B flat minor. Here it is in B flat minor. So what we're having here is a composer, Lyle, implying the minor without actually playing a minor chord, representing the minor scale uh, with its major six degree. Back to major. Minor again. finally major. You know, one of the great things about uh, Highlander is its tonal plan, the way the different keys are working together, because we start from C major, then we move to A flat, and then we move to B flat.
And can I make a confession? It's only recently that I noticed that the second part in A flat is actually the same melody almost as the Lyle did such a great job of making the music move forward. It sounds like the continuation of the music. It doesn't sound like a repetition. And another thing, the first technique that I showed you in the way up of taking that small motif and working with it, this type of work can go in many directions. But what we're seeing here may be even more impressive in a way because he's working here with a complete melody that already works. And what he's doing is he's making this change inside with a harmony that gets us and gets the melody excited. That's why the melody reaches higher in this part. You know, over the years in the Pat Metheny group, I think we can all agree that the primary melodic composer was Pat Metheny. Pat Metheny uh, can do a lot of things uh, in the field of composition, as he showed us um, in A Secret Story and in his project, the Orchestrion project. He can write big things. But I think at his core, he's like a songwriter, a great songwriter. While Lyle Mays is more of a composer. You know, this is where he's coming from. He even considered himself more of a composer than a pianist. But what we are seeing here is Lyle May's ability to write these long, gorgeous melodies that we can also see in what it takes, in Fictionary uh, from his trio album and in um, some other uh, great tunes. So I hope this video will add something to your experience next time you're listening to Highland Air. Um, thank you for watching and uh, I will see you in the next one.